here's what we're gonna do over this next bit of time. We are gonna do the unimaginable and we are going to learn how to change the world with one sentence. You do not need God, Jesus, or any other deity to be good. Now, that's not the sentence. Grace and peace to you from God, our creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I'm going to try that greeting one more time. Grace and peace to you from me. I was raised practicing, rehearsing, and repeating the idea that I was born naturally bad, smudged with sin. My dad was a pastor, and I would go to church every Sunday, week after week, month after month, over a period of four decades, and in worship, I would recite these words. I confess that I am by nature sinful and unclean and cannot free myself. I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what I have done and by what I have left undone. Now somewhere over or between the second and third decade, I myself became an ordained pastor and it was me who was leading hundreds of people week after week through these memorized words of confession and it was me who before I would speak to a group of people, I would greet them with the good stuff of grace and peace, but not from me, from God. Now the idea that underlies this notion that we are by nature sinful, that we have a natural inclination to the bad is contained in the doctrine of original sin. This is a foundational doctrine that informs the entire belief system of Western Christianity. And there's two parts to it. One is what I've already said. We're born with a sort of default position set to the bad, to greed, to selfishness, to hate, to violence. The second part is the good that we want and need to get to live this strong moral life is located outside of us in another entity. Now I began to really understand the weight of this doctrine when I was in seventh grade. The timing makes sense because in my tradition in seventh grade, we started what was called confirmation or another word for it would be church school where we would go regularly twice a week after school and we would learn all of the ideas and doctrines and dogma that inform our faith. So I was learning that over here and learning all kinds of other things on this side of the world. <laughs> my body was changing, my curves were emerging, I was noticing boys, boys were noticing me, and those feelings that you had inside of you that were, you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> when that one certain person sort of accidentally on purpose, you know, brushed up against you and whoosh, it was like this mm, electric current just <laughs> went right through your body and you're just left in this flush of heat. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> I loved every minute of it. And I hated myself for it. Just despised myself at the same time, because I had learned that all of those ideas and fantasies and desires and feelings in my body were all part of that sin. And then if I didn't manage that correctly, if I didn't get enough of that good, and for me, that was from God and Jesus, if I didn't get enough of that in me, I was going to be in serious trouble. We're talking eternal trouble. Because what makes this doctrine more weighty is that it's a lifelong endeavor. You are in, you and I are in a perpetual cycle of sin and trying to get the goodness to manage the sin and get it and manage, and we don't find out if we've done it until we're dead. <laughs> wow. 
this weighed on me. And so you know what I did? I got fat, literally. I put on pounds and my curves disappeared and I accepted this heavy weight of perpetual sin. And I became an expert on it. Oh yeah, I could spot sin anywhere. And not just mine, because of course the doctrine of original sin doesn't just talk to me about my sin. <laughs> it talks to me about all of yours too. So you see, I know you. I know you and your sin. You who can't control your sexuality. You're promiscuous. You're easy. You're gay. Bisexual. I know you. I know your sin. Because I needed to stay away from you, for one. And for two, it always felt really good to point to you and say, well, at least I'm better. So I know you who can't control your ego and you're arrogant and you're prideful and you whose passions just get all out of control and you're partying and you drink and you smoke. I know you. See what happens? Do you see? We get divine permission to divide each other up into categories, good and bad. Righteous, unrighteous, pure, impure, deviant, normal. And we all do it. We all do it. It's not just the religious who do it because the reality that we live in is that Western Christianity has had a profound impact on laying the foundation for our culture. And as Madame Nin said, culture informs who we are. And we understand what to expect from each other then. And it harms us. And we have, I think, as a society, swallowed this idea so fully that like me, we have become fat. We have become fat with this idea and it has slowed us down. And we don't look for new ideas anymore. And we're unwilling to push on those ideas that have been accepted for so long and to ask, are they still relevant to us today? I think it's time we do it. I think it's time we ask, is the doctrine of original sin still correct? And I say, no, it isn't. And it's time to let it go. Let it go boldly, loudly, and repeatedly. Because it's wrong. Now, when I talk to groups about this, somebody always says, at least one person, religious or non-religious, it doesn't matter, they say this. Well, that can't be. That cannot be that we're not born naturally bad. And you know already what they point to, because maybe you're thinking it in your head. Look at all the bad stuff. We've heard about a lot of it today. Yet that is so unconvincing. Because if that is what we use to prove we are naturally bad, the good that we experience every moment of every day just completely washes that away. I mean, you all have experienced bucketfuls of it already today. You just haven't counted it. We walk right past good all the time, and we don't hold it in. That we don't swallow. But man, if somebody cut us off in traffic or was rude to us, we will tell that story over and over and over again, <laughs> right? We'll pull it out and look at it a couple times a day. <laughs> We're trained to look at the bad and the negative and to pass up the good, and we need a new plan. 
We need a new training and we need a new mantra and idea to practice and rehearse. Because the truth is I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know your story or your hopes or your dreams. But here is what I do know. I am naturally good. And I have already within me the power to make more good for me and for others. Now that, my friends, is the sentence. That is the sentence that will change the world. Now imagine with me, suspend your disbelief. Imagine with me for just a minute, if we throw that idea, that sentence into the water, what are the ripples going to be? Imagine. I rehearse that idea. I'm good. And I have so much good in me that I can make more good. I rehearse that. As much as I listen to or rehearse any other idea, my self-image is going to blossom. I am going to feel so good about myself. And I'm going to feel good about you too. Because remember, it's not just about me. It's about you. And I affirm that you and I share the same core good and the same capacity to make more good. Can you imagine what that means? We would be better problem solvers and we know we've got a lot to solve because I'm more confident in myself. I trust myself more. I'm less threatened by you and I'm more willing to engage in dialogue, even difficult discussions. I mean, imagine, we would actually be more productive workers. We'd have an easier time listening to each other's ideas and our frustrations. We would be more innovative because when I trust myself more, I am willing to risk a new idea and be wrong. I'm also willing to listen to yours. Check this out. Men and women, on par. The same, equal. There's no gender to blame for the fall into sin. We're all already good and we're all human and we have the same core good and the same capacity to make more. Think about this. No need for right religion anymore. Huh? Doesn't mean we won't have worship or faith traditions. Those will continue. It just means it's not required to be good. I don't have to have my right entity fight over your right entity for us to see each other as good. I can disagree with you, but I cannot hate you with divine permission. Which means, too, I don't get to demonize you because you don't fit into my good box. I don't get to feel righteous about that because I might not like your choices. I might not like the way you live. But I affirm first that you and I share the same core good and the same ability to use that good to make more. I mean, come on. Do you feel that weight coming off? It's not unimaginable. It is within our reach. One sentence. I am naturally good. And I have in me the power to make more good for me and for others. It's not going to make a utopia. But it will give us more capacity to solve the problems that face us as well as know that when bad things do happen, they do not define us. It takes 21 days to form a habit. Do you know that? 21 days to form a habit. Make this sentence your habit. Get your iPods out and your Blackberries and your iPads. Get to your calendar. Set it. For the next 21 days on repeat, I know you can do it. I know it's easy. Set an alarm to remind yourself every day and repeat it. Start today. I am naturally good. And I have within me the power to make more good 
for me and for others. 21 days, one sentence. It will change the world. Thank you. That's not the sentence. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I'm going to try that greeting one more time. Grace and peace to you from me. I was raised practicing, rehearsing, and repeating the idea that I was born naturally bad, smudged with sin. My dad was a pastor, and I would go to church every Sunday, week after week, month after month, over a period of four decades, and in worship, I would recite these words. I confess that I am by nature sinful and unclean and cannot free myself. I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what I have done, and by what I have left undone. 